So in this video, I'm going to be finishing up this painting. It is so close to being finished. For those of you that saw the video I just uh, posted, it is from the book Cultivated is where I got my palette inspiration. And uh, Cultivated is written by Kristen Giel, The Elements of Floral Style. It's one of my favorite books. And lately it's been my go-to for inspiration for YouTube videos and for painting. And so I put down my own watercolor background, what I would call kind of like my art poetry style paintings. And I'm gonna finish it up right now. I am going to add my little signature round moon or sun, whatever you want it to be. I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada right now and our wildfires are out of control. So I'm inside with the windows closed and the air is very dangerous to breathe in right now. It's very toxic. So art is my savior today. I'm gonna take my watercolor pencil and I'm gonna add a little bit more interest in mark making over top of this paint. Uh, this was a watercolor background and I added gouache as well as acrylic paints to it and right now I'm taking my water soluble pencil and I'm just making some line work it's a little bit hard to see because of this color but uh, there you go I'm making some line work over these already dried gouache and acrylic paint leaves just for interest I'm gonna add Ooh, that that's a beautiful green. You can kind of see that better. I'm going to just add more mark making into some of these little round leaves. And you can see my inspiration for these little leaves came from right here, this pocket of rounded leaf shapes. So these were, again, I used, I think it was Holbein gouache, which is an in-between of watercolor and acrylic paint. And I put it over top of my dried watercolor, just for interest. And right now I'm going in and I'm adding my own mark making that I love while using the book page for inspiration. This is a green that I really don't use much of in my work, but I love this green. So we've got that dark moon. I usually do a metallic moon, but not today. This is a Posca paint pen I'm using, and I love this color. It's almost like a dark, dark brown or... I guess it would be called maybe a burnt umber if I'm thinking of the correct color there. I just love that, sort of a dark reddish maroon brown. I also added in gelato, which is this water-soluble art supply, which is a fun thing to kind of add on if you just want to bring color in to areas, darken areas, lighten areas that, you know, you've already had dried watercolor in. So you can just see I'm sneaking in some dark up here and a little bit up here. I'm going to take my art sponge. You can also use your finger and just kind of smear it around. And I really like that dark because it was really hard for me to achieve the dark watercolor. I wanted to find this dark, dark, almost black brown background. It's really hard to tell actually what color that is. But I feel like I've brought in the dark that I love from this page into my work by adding it um, on this sponge. I'm going to just take this artist sponge, and again, you can use a dollar store sponge, to be honest, or your finger. And I'm just kind of darkening up this area and adding interest. I'm adding depth. And if somebody looked at it, they'd be like, wow, what kind of supplies do you have in this very much mixed media piece? also going to go into this white flower which I was inspired by this flower even though they look totally different and I just am craving it to be more white so I'm using my white water-based sharpie paint pen and I'm bringing out that white and so 
My art practice is really putting my art supplies out where I can see them every day, even if that means taking over the kitchen table briefly. Uh, my family, I'm really grateful they let me do that. And I, if I see my little travel watercolor set or, you know, um, any type of paint set, when you see it, you're more likely to go to it and use it. And I think you just have to realize, you know, there's no harm in just getting out paper. It's not a big canvas. Just grab paper, decent quality. If it's 98 pounds and up, that's good. I recommend 140 pound paper and up, watercolor paper or mixed media paper. And just playing around with swatches, you know, just sort of like I did the other day with the other page in this book where see if I can find it. I had done a video where this one page inspired two paintings, this one here, and the way I started it was just by pulling colors I loved and swatching them out onto watercolor paper. And you know, I can go back over this with acrylic paint and create a whole new painting at a later date. So, you know, art can only, it doesn't have to be like sitting down and painting a painting. It's like just all this practice adds up. This practice when you're in front of the TV or on the phone with someone. Um, and I'm adding in a little bit more of the leaves here. And this is a permanent studio ball pen I got at the dollar store, the Dollarama here in Canada. Very affordable. Micron pens are also wonderful going over top of watercolor. And just if you're into illustrative work, the Micron pens are great because they come in different widths. Uh, I don't use them a lot though. It's funny how you kind of go to certain brands, certain supplies, even though they may not necessarily be better. It's just what you're used to. I wanted to show you how I achieved this look here. This is uh, again, a gelato made by Faber-Castell and it's metallic melon, and I love this color. So this color, it's so, so vibrant and beautiful, and it makes me happy when you add watercolor, or sorry, when you add water to it. Isn't that beautiful, that color? I love how going over top of that green brings out a whole new color. And I love when you use a lot of water, how light it gets. That's a pretty high quality watercolor supply, um, this color anyway. Some other colors like this green, um, they don't blend as well when you add water. So not all supplies of the same brand are created equal. That's a whole nother video though. I'm going to go back to my, oh, where'd my painting go? There it is. So I think I'm pretty much done. I didn't add any polka dots. Polka dots are sort of my signature way of tying a painting together or starting it. I am just going to find my polka dot paint pen. Where did it go? I don't see it, so I'll add the polka dots maybe a little bit later, but I think I found my larger uh, Sharpie water-based pen. I'm just going to add some dot work through the center just to move the eye of the viewer around when the camera's off and I find my other more fine tip paint pen, I will add the dots. I like that the dots aren't perfectly round. Um, so this is really coming together. Art is all about learning from practice and in this particular piece, one of the things that I just loved that I didn't expect to happen was I added gouache in here. So I'm just going to pull out my gouache. It wasn't this particular, oh no, it was this color, pale lilac. Um, so this is a more expensive type of paint. I'm still not in the habit of using these all the time. They're not quite as versatile as watercolor, but this uh, gouache, so this is sort of an in-between watercolor and acrylic, and I just put petals over top of this lilac color with the gouache, and when it dried, I went back in, and with my finger, I used a little bit of this raspberry gelato, 
and I went over top and I got the neatest texture. And this is something I don't typically do in my work, but I really love it. So this is something I might repeat in future works. So I really encourage you to, you know, look at your piece and whether it's just practice or you're selling your work, look at it and decide, you know, do I love it? And if you don't love it, what could you do more of to make you love it? What could you do less of? What could you cover up? Or what would you not do again if it's something that just wasn't as resonating for you? Uh, just seeing this now, I feel like the white up here in the flower really pulled the piece together for me. I really, really like that white next to this color palette. Um, there's a lot of kind of Titan buffs and beiges and browns and greens. And just this white makes it so fresh. So I'm going to go back in and just do a little bit more white. And one thing that I had done uh, in the other video, I had added a watercolor flower that just was not the right color. The color looked right. And then when I put it down, it was more like this reddish um, pink and it really changed the whole palette. So what I had done is I had used actually a couple floral stickers I had and I put the stickers right over top of the color that I had used that was really hard to kind of sort of remove. Um, and I love how putting the stickers down, it just pulled the palette back together in a way that I loved. And I went over top of this sticker, this was mostly white, and I used my gelato and whatever this sticker is made of, it picked up this gelato color and I love how that blends in. Normally I would never use stickers in my work, um, especially if, if I'm going to sell my work. Um, I don't do a lot of mixed media. Obviously you want to use royalty free images. Uh, again, that's a whole nother conversation, but I just wanted to show you how I sort of resolved my painting when it wasn't going the way I had hoped. And because I'm selling my work, I am in the process, well, firstly, of intuitive painting. So just painting for joy and following that conversation I'm having with the art. And I do, though, you know, I'm at the stage where I want to learn to resolve my art, though, and love it more. So if there's something that I had done, yes, you know, it was intuitive. I should leave it, be happy with it. But for me, the challenge as an artist is resolving it to love it more. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but I really just love the process of art and painting. Um, right now, I just see that I really want to add a more, more of those line work uh, leaves, leaf shapes, leaves. And I'm just going to extend that down and maybe out a little bit. And so I'm just... Again, every time I sit down to paint, it's sort of painting from a place of non-judgment and play and then learning to resolve it when I'm finished. So I'm going to call the painting complete after I add those little dots and I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, I thought I was going to abandon it, which I usually don't do, but when I had that color that just didn't match the color palette, I think the pressure of feeling like I was being videoed uh, made me put more pressure on myself. So I'm going to um, kind of learn from that and just power through and uh, know that what I'm doing, uh, I'm going to be confident in it. And, you know, to the people that are you all that are watching will have sort of your own insights and it may help you in your practice with what I'm doing. So thanks again for tuning in and we will see you soon. I'm going to be doing another color palette shortly.